to his supporters as the ghetto president, but Robert Kyagulanyi is more popularly known as Bobby Wine, a raga singer in Uganda who swapped his dreadlocks for a suit and a seat in parliament. Take away all the wealth and the glamour. In January 2021, Wine was a main contender in the Ugandan national elections. He ran for president against uh, Yoweri Museveni, who has been in power now for 36 years. Despite his popularity amongst young Ugandans, he lost that election and continues to contest the election results. He may not have won, but what he did get was a lot of international attention. He's now calling on the world to help Ugandans to impose sanctions on a president that he believes is a dictator. While well, Bobby Wine is in South Africa and my colleague Naledi Muleo was able to sit down with the musician turned opposition politician this morning, she asked him what brings him to our shores. Well, um, Uganda, I'll say, is going through a very hard time. Uh, we are still under the tight grip of General Seven, who has ruled our country for the last 36 years and uh, democracy and uh, human rights are being stifled. Uh, many people have been abducted and arrested. Basically, it's chaos back home. And uh, having done what we could uh, through the elections that were blatantly rigged, we find it necessary to uh, create more awareness about the plight of Ugandans back home. Like now, when the world is uh, keeping its attention in different areas, we think it's upon us to attract the attention of the eyes of the world uh, to Uganda because when uh, the world focuses on Uganda, then there is a possibility of calling General Museveni and his lieutenants to order. And that's why we uh, grab every opportunity to make a case for Uganda in the media and in the development partners. Uh, we grab it with uh, both hands and want to seize it and maximize it. I'm trying to grapple in my mind what it sounds like to have a president for 36 years. I mean, that's longer than even I have been alive. Yeah. Um, let's talk about how that impacts on the population in, in Uganda, right? When you have a leader who was held on to power for 36 years, when you have young leaders such as yourselves that have tried to step forward and say, we are uh, these successes and we are available to take the country forward. Well, Uganda is a country of 46 million people. 85% of which are much younger than me. 85% of our population is under the age of 35. That means more than 85. I've never seen another president. Uh, I was only four years when General Museveni took over our country. I am 40 today, and uh, he's still the president. So that's a reality that we are dealing with. Unfortunately, um, largely General Museveni and many other leaders in Africa are way uh, you know, older than their populations. Um, you know, we are a young population that has a young and revolutionary and creative uh, thought line. Unfortunately, we don't have an opportunity. I rose to the occasion as a leader because I thought we deserved the opportunity to shape our own destiny, to make our own mistakes and, mistake and correct them, to uh, plan a world where we are going to actually uh, live and either benefit from our work or pay for our own mistakes. But here we are being conditioned to pay for the terrible mistakes of the people that won't actually be around when uh, we are paying for those mistakes. For example, um, Uganda is highly indebted and we continue to borrow. I'm saying we continue to borrow because General Museveni and his uh, team keep borrowing huge sums of money uh, which sums are going to be paid by us, our children, and our children's children. Unfortunately, all this is being lost in patronage and, and corruption. So, yeah, uh, that's the, 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 the tragedy of Uganda. However, we choose not just to give up. We choose not just to lament. We choose to look for all possible ways. We are non-violent. We don't believe in violence. Although many uh, young people are on the breaking point and they are pondering violence. But because we know what violence has done in the past and we know violence only begets violence, we are trying to use moral ways, reaching out to uh, various development partners and asking them not to continue supporting the dictatorship back home because we know that Uganda largely depends 
on foreign aid. Mm. And if there are conditions put there before foreign aid, conditions like respect for human rights and democracy and the rule of law, we believe we can have some recourse. You talk about violence. Last year during the elections, we watched you suffer that violence yourself, your family going through it as well. Um, many of your comrades uh, that were um, injured and just the levels of violence that the world was able to see. Now you're saying to the world, stop funding Museveni. Who are you talking to? Everybody that cares to listen. Everybody that is responsible for funding Museveni. Recently, uh, the IMF gave Museveni loads of money. We know that uh, the, the trucks that are uh, uh, we are running over our innocent supporters. We are being given to us by the European Union. We would see trucks written on Danish aid, written on uh, Swedish aid, but they are the ones used by the police not to keep law and order, but to play politics, to oppress people. Um, we are telling the development partners, in particular the United States, which gives up to a billion dollars annually to Uganda in military support. We're talking to the European Union, which supports our General Museveni in different ways. We're asking them, first of all, to disassociate with General Museveni. Because like we've said constantly, that when Mugabe did what Museveni is doing in Uganda, he was sanctioned. When Charles Taylor did to the people of Liberia what Museveni is doing to Ugandans, he was sanctioned. Why is Museveni not being sanctioned? You know, we want the same standard of human rights as Ugandans, the same standard as uh, the rest of the world. If what Museveni is doing to the people of Uganda is being done by a president from Europe or from other countries, he or she would not be a president the next week. What is then different from Museveni? Are we not human enough? So we are asking the international community not to allow Museveni project them as partners in crime, mm. you know, and we think that's moral enough. I need to ask this question, and I, I think that it is the elephant in the room all the time, especially in the time that we're living in, that Africa has its challenges. Uganda certainly does, and so, does many, so do many other countries on the continent. And yet we are being asked at this time as well to have a position on the war in the Ukraine. Yeah. What is the position that Africa should be taking right now? Africa should be taking a moral position. Africa should be standing with the oppressed people, not just in Ukraine, but everywhere in the world. You know, all humans are humans. Nobody has the right to evade, invade and kill people indiscriminately. And therefore, we stand, we should be standing with the people of Ukraine. But not only the people in Ukraine, all people that are being oppressed, you know, uh, I, I would like to believe that what's happening uh, to the people of Ukraine is in many ways happening to the people in Uganda, unarmed people. So while we stand with the people of Ukraine, we want the world to see the atrocities happening in Uganda with the same lenses.